All right, we're going to let this live stream get started and then we'll get underway. All right, Coach, today we're going to get started with a question from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. He'll be followed by Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. Go ahead, Dwayne. Thanks, Palmer. Uh, Coach, just wanted to get an update on, on, on Baines. Has, has he done enough? Uh, I know you guys still have limited practice in terms of in between games, but has he done enough to, to see action today? No, it doesn't look like it, uh, Dwayne. We haven't had a really light practice yesterday. Uh, didn't do much on the court at all. Three on three, four on four, five on five. So not at this point. All right, Coach, next up is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. He'll be followed by Gina Mizell with Valley Tales Newsletter. Go ahead, Kellen. Hey, Coach, just your overall thoughts on the Clippers and, and how you guys have defended them so far this season, what you can take away from that, both in just a positive and a negative way. Um, they're a good team, a championship contender. I mean, you, can, you don't stop teams like that. You try to make it difficult on them. And um, they have very few weaknesses, if any, uh, they're just built for the playoffs. They have one-on-one -on -one players. They have stars. They play good defense. They're physical. They talk on defense. Uh, they're efficient in transition. And they have veterans on their bench. And so and we, we won a game against them at our place. Um, but we defended well in the, in the first half. And uh, that great ball movement and player movement uh, didn't have a great last five minutes of that particular game, but we made a few shots down the stretch and got to the free throw line that helped us. But it's a, it's a strong physical team. You have to be able to have a mental stamina against a team like this and, and, and stick to your principles and not get caught up in the physicality as far as complaining to the referees or getting out of what you do that allows you to be productive. So. We've coached that, we've talked about it, and now we have to go do it. All right, Coach, next up we have Gina Mizell. She'll be followed by Kyle Goon with the Orange County Register. Go ahead, Gina. Hey, Monty, kind of a broader question for you. Um, yesterday and throughout, we've talked about kind of the relentless playing style that you guys are obviously now known for. Just how did you go about first instilling it in, in the team and then also sustaining it throughout the first 65 games before you picked it back up here? And when do you feel like the guys really bought into it and said, okay, this is how we're going to play and this is how we're going to try to win games? I mean, I, I spent time talking to all of the guys last summer about, you know, the style and, you know, I thought it'd be fun to play this way, but it came down to having the youngest team in the league and, and one of them, I think, is the youngest, and not being able to play any other way and have success. That, that's what it came down to. And um, I feel like the guys from Flagstaff till now have, you know, committed to that. And I think it's fun, you know, to play a certain way and, and have a style and, and know that, you know, that's, that's who you are. That's our, our identity. And I think our guys, you'd have to ask them, but I think they like playing this way. And, um, aggressive, but I think it's controlled and strategic. And I just think that guys, you know, I hope teams around the league notice that, that that's our identity and I hope people see it's a fun way to play basketball. Coach, next up is Kyle Goon with the Orange County Register in person in Orlando. He'll be followed by Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, um, have you gotten a chance to watch AD much in the bubble? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he had a big game last night. I'm wondering, as his coach back at the beginning, I mean, do you, do you see something mentally or competitively that's come along um, that he was still learning when you coached him? Gosh, I haven't watched him like that. <laughs> Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> um, I just think it takes a while for the game to slow down for guys. Um, all the all the great players, in my opinion, go through a progression. You know, they they establish who they are. They get the big contracts. They make the all-star teams. 
and not that winning is not a priority, but they get to a point where winning is the only thing that cares or matters. And, and that's what it looks like with uh, AD. It's just he's, he's a winning player. You know, I watched him in the Utah game, you know, s- slowly walk into a screen to get the switch. Whereas when I had him, that was <laughs> he was running into the guy, diving, dunk. Like that's what he knew. Now he's he's the game is so slow for him. And you start it like this, right? And now you can just see the game is just like you know, he gets the mismatch, LeBron goes, he goes, they got shooters and he just plays. He just makes money plays. And I think it just takes time for guys to get that mentality. And it just seems like he's just about winning right now. That's it. All right, Coach, next up is a follow-up question from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Go ahead, Dwayne. I actually was going to ask something similar to that, but I'll ask something different than far as Anthony Davis. And obviously, a lot is made of, of LeBron and, and Giannis being up for the MVP race, but could, is there, how much of a case can be made that Anthony Davis is the best player in the league? Gosh, you're not going to pin me in that hole and have other players mad at me. So I have no idea. I think all those guys are great. I hope they play poorly against us. And that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. All right. Thank you very much for your time today, Coach. Thank you.